Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. I just want to share a word with you. I think this is going to be part one because it's kind of extensive. And I'm going to read from the book of Isaiah just to start. Chapter 65, starting at the 17th verse. Isaiah 65, starting at chapter verse 17. For behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. And they shall not build and another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of the of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Now, chapter Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 22 is the one I want to focus on. And they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. All right? As a matter of fact, I want to start Isaiah 65, 20th verse to the 22nd. Chapter Isaiah, book of Isaiah, chapter 20, verse 20 to 22. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed, and they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Okay? First thing you have to look at for the days of a tree shall be the days of my people. Okay. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. You have cedars, you have pine, you have different trees that can live anywhere from 500 to well over a thousand years. A thousand years. Book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 22. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. This is when God is talking about coming and restoring Israel and Judah and putting us in our own land as the days of a tree are the days of my people a child shall die a hundred years old a child okay so I'm reading this and saying this to connect it to the thousand year reign the thousand year reign of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, the thousand year reign, okay? For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, mine elect shall enjoy the work of their hands. When it speaks about they shall build the house and inhabit it, they shall plant and eat, another shall not enjoy the work of their hands. When you think of houses, the length of time that a house can stand, it's telling you that when we return home, 
our longevity is going to change. Our longevity is going to change. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. All right. Israel never got to dwell in the totality of the land. The covenant was not completely fulfilled. There is a last portion of that covenant. That thousand year reign is the fulfillment of that covenant. It happens before judgment. As a matter of fact, we're going to go into the book of Revelations to look at it. Okay? And we're going to look at chapter 20, starting at the fourth verse. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now. I want to go over that again. When we are in the book of Revelations, I'm going to start at the fifth verse. And the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, you have certain people, the four and twenty elders in the book of Revelations, they will also reign with Christ. Okay. And those who died for the word of God, who were beheaded, and had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. Okay, these are people that are coming out of that great tribulation. Yes, we will be brought out of it. We will be brought out of it. Okay, when you look at the book of Jeremiah, we're talking about that thousand year reign. All right, now... This is not the resurrection of all the dead that comes during the judgment. This is not the judgment. This is the time of the thousand year reign. Okay. But what is happening with Israel and Judah? What is happening? Let's go to Jeremiah first to find Israel. What is happening with Israel? Okay. First of all, we're going to start. With who Israel is to God and who God is or Yahshua HaMashiach is to Israel, Israel and Judah. Now, one of the things, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord, the Lord was a husband unto Israel and Judah, unto Israel and Judah. We know that the reason we went into our captivity is because our ancestors sinned against God. They broke the covenant. And one of the things uh, that would happen to us was that we would go into captivity. Okay. But we also know that God is going to come and get Israel. He is going to restore Israel. But, and I'm in uh, chapter 31, verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them. Unto the greatest, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I remember their sin no more. Now, that thousand year reign, that thousand year reign, okay? One second, let me get back to it. We're in the book of Revelations, chapter 20. We're going to chapter 20, all right? Now, we have to remember. In the book of Jeremiah, and I'm just going to name one, chapter 31, 
God recognizes that Israel and Judah, he was a husband to them. And the nation, he was married to them. But they broke the covenant. They uh, committed fornication. Fornication meaning going after other gods, other ways. All right. Now, so when we hear about this marriage, there's a marriage coming. There is a marriage coming. Who is this marriage for? Who is this marriage for? All right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to find it. All right. Now, we're in the book of Revelations, chapter 19. Okay. We're starting at the ninth verse. Matter of fact, we're going to start at the fifth verse. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor unto him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. This marriage supper, this marriage supper, when God comes to get us, in the book, in the book of Revelations, chapter 19, I started at the fifth verse. The marriage, the marriage. What is the marriage? When Israel and Judah are joined again to the Most High, judgment has not come yet. Judgment has not come yet. We are in chapter 19. We also know that we're, there's going to be a thousand year reign. We just read in the book of Isaiah chapter 65, as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. As the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. Now, you have to understand, when you're in the presence of God, when you're in the glory of his presence, just like when Moses went up on the mountain and he was with God, and when he came back down, light beams shone from his face, okay? In the previous message that I did, I talked about how Adam and Eve were beings of light. Their bodies were beings of light. It's in the book of Adam and Eve, in the lost books of the Bible, forgotten books of Eden. Um, you can look at it the same way. Here was Moses when he went up on the mountain and he was in the presence of the Most High in that pure glory. Light beams shone out of his face, light beams. He had to cover his face with a veil, okay? When he was in the presence of the Most High God, as a matter of fact, he asked God to show him his glory. God showed him his backside. God showed him his backside. Okay, he told him, no man can see my face and live because Moses was in flesh. Okay, but just from seeing the backside of God and covering his face, Moses came down off of that mountain with light beams. So when Israel is joined back with the Most High, when that marriage takes place, this is before judgment. This is before that great and mighty change comes. Although there's going to be a change. As the days of a tree, so are the days of my people. As the days of a tree, so are the days of my people. A child shall die a hundred years old. So we know death is still going on. Death has not been removed yet, okay? This is when Israel returns, that thousand-year reign, when Satan and the beast are bound up and cast to the, into the abyss for a thousand years. Israel's going home. There's a marriage. There's a joining. That marriage is going on, that great celebration, if you will, okay? Now, all right. Now, I'm going to move around in the book of Revelations. 
because I think some people get confused about what is said. And, I, and I'm in chapter 20. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ, with Christ a thousand years. Who is he reigning over? Who is he reigning over? I've got a hair in my eyes. Seems like every time I pray do this, I get hair somewhere. Um, who is he reigning over? He's reigning over Israel and the strangers that are among them. He's reigning over Israel. The marriage has happened. The marriage has happened. The saints are resurrected. This is the first resurrection. They don't have to worry about uh, the, the judgment. Okay. As a matter of fact, yes. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. Why do they call it the second death? Because if you're resurrected, it means for those people that they've already died. They died once. The second death has no power. The second death has no power. We're all going to be resurrected, those of us who die. And for it is uh, done to man that we shall die once and then judgment. Okay, for it is decreed unto man to die once and then judgment. To die and then judgment. Okay, now, during that thousand year reign, we're going to do line upon line, precept upon precept. All right, I want to give it as I got it. Um, one of the other things that we know, the four and twenty elders shall reign on earth with Yeshua, Jesus, okay, during that thousand year reign, you can line it up for as the days of a tree shall be the days of my people. That's that great marriage supper. That's that great marriage supper, okay? This is after the saints are taken home, brothers and sisters. This is after the saints are taken home. I was reading Isaiah 65 and trying to get clarity on it, trying to understand um, what was being told to me okay at the same time things are getting put back in order a lot of the chaos that is going on is being removed okay now let me let me get it right because there's so much information i don't want to say it wrong um at the same time this show this is when the animals go back and begin to eat straw. There is no killing. There is no death. Well, there is death. There is no terror. There is no fear on God's holy mountain. And we are being instructed. As a matter of fact, he says that he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Why is it called a rod of iron? Because it's the word of God. It doesn't bend or yield. It doesn't bend or yield. In that thousand years, we are being taken back to our perfection. And all Israel, we know, shall not be saved. All Israel shall not be saved. We know that there are rebels. There shall be rebels. As a matter of fact, two-thirds shall die in the wilderness. But I'm talking about the one-third that's going to make it in. And we shall live and have children and have homes during that thousand year reign. How do we know that? We're going to go back and read Isaiah 65 and what it says. Isaiah 65. I'm just going to do this in pieces and part and come back to it. Um, because for me, at least, it's late. But I got this revelation and I wanted to share it while it's still fresh upon me. 965. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that have not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old. 
But the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed, and they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. When you plant vineyards, the increase, the time, the cycle of it can go for years and years and years. Meaning, this is giving you an idea of the longevity. Remember, we're going to be in the presence of life. We are not just going back to dwell in the city and live amongst each other and try to have a peaceful home state. We are being taken back by God. There is a marriage ceremony that's going to go on. There is a marriage ceremony that's going to go on. Okay? And this goes on before judgment. Before judgment. Okay? This is before judgment. Okay? As a matter of fact, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breath of the earth and campused the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. Now, before I get to the next, they, they, they encamped around the city of the saints. They went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The city, the city where the saints are living, the saints are there. A thousand year reign. When the time is up, Satan, the beast, his army, they're going to come up against the saints. So you know it's Israel and Judah. It's Israel and Judah. Remember, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Okay. By now, the marriage has gone on. We're married to God. We're married to his word. We are married to it. He's ruling us with a rod of iron. What does that mean? His word. The word of God goes out, does not come back void, does exactly what he purposed it to do. As a matter of fact, we also know that God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So that word doesn't bend, it doesn't break. It's a rod of iron, okay? And we're under that rulership being taught. We're being brought up in the spirit. We're being, uh, our fallow ground is being broken up. What fallow ground? There are certain things in the spirit that we need to know. We're learning the spirit. We're, we, we're amongst him. He's amongst us. That thousand years, that thousand years. It is not like anything we could imagine where we are now. It's not just the spirit of the Lord taking us into another country, brothers and sisters. No, it's not. It's not us just going and finding out where is our homeland. No, it's deeper. It, it, it's it's closer. It's, it's so much stronger. It's beyond anything we could ever hope or imagine. It is a thousand years. And many of us, we're talking about living the ages of, of the ancients. We're talking about living the years of the ancients. Some people may live six, seven hundred years, eight hundred years, five hundred years. Now remember what it said. A child shall die a hundred years old. So at a hundred, a child would still be considered a child after one hundred years. We're entering into that eternal realm, and we're not even there yet, but we're entering into that eternal realm. A child to die a hundred years old. We also know death, the last enemy, has not been put down yet. I wanted to get a little bit more of this written down because there's a whole lot, and this portion of it's on my spirit. I wanted to bring it to you as the spirit brought it to me, um, but... The book of Isaiah, as the years of the tree shall be the years of my people. As the years of the tree shall be the years of my people. Now, if you look up how long some trees last, you, you got trees that, that supposedly go thousands, excuse me, thousands of years. I know there are trees right here in America 
that were here when the colonizing invaders came. Okay, and that's well over 400 years. And the trees were considered old when they arrived. They were considered old when they arrived. Um, I'm definitely going to come back to this. I want to talk about the thousand year reign. All right. Um, blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. Now, for those of us who die before the spirit of the Lord comes back and gets us, definitely you are blessed because you have no part, no fear in the second death. The second death is that complete death. Okay. And there are those, even those from the days of Moses, who if your name is not written in the book of life, the book of God, you're going to take part in that second death. There were those who, during the time of Moses in the book of Exodus, chapter 35, it's, I believe it's chapter 35, when there were people who urged Aaron to make that golden calf. And when Moses came down off of the mountain, some of them were very stubborn. Some of them were very stubborn. As a matter of fact, Moses asked that those who were on the side of God come over to him. But there were men in that camp who did not side with God. They stayed with those foreign pagan ways. And God said their names would not be in the book of life. Their names would not be in the book of life. So the second death that he's talking about is if your name is not written in the book of life, you can die in this life, but you've got life inside you so that when the judgment comes, you wake up to everlasting life. But there are some people that are waking up to everlasting destruction, to shame, to torment. Okay, their names are not written in the book of life. God called it the book of God in the book of Exodus chapter 35 when he talked about the rebels then. You had rebels then. As it was then, so shall it be now. There's nothing new under the sun. Whatever you do has already been done. Okay, and just like there will be rebels in the wilderness when we go home, there were rebels in the wilderness through the first exodus. And many of them, their names are not written in the book of life. If you read in the book of Exodus, chapter 35, you will see it. But I wanted to talk about the thousand year reign, the thousand year reign. And so that you understand that thousand year reign that's coming. Let me just go over this again. First, I'm going to quote the book of Isaiah, chapter 65. As the days of the tree shall be the days of my people. As the days of a tree shall be the days of my people. Trees can live hundreds, if not uh, over a thousand years. I'm using the measurement of the thousand years because we're talking about that thousand year reign. The true millennials. Okay. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Those are the people who are going to be resurrected as the leaders reigning with God and Christ. Reigning over who? Over the house of Israel, Israel and Judah. A thousand years. Okay. How do we know it's Israel and Judah? Here, chapter uh, 20 in the book of Revelations. Now we're starting at the seventh verse. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. Who is he trying to battle? It talks about the number of whom is at the sand of the sea. He's going to get so many people to come up against the camp of the saints that they'll be considered, the number of them is like the sands of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed. They surrounded the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. But fire And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Okay? I just wanted to pinpoint that one piece. They're encamping. The camp, they're surrounding the camp of the saints. The saints. This is not in heaven. This is on earth. That thousand year reign. When we go back home. 
I'm going to, as a matter of fact, there's so many pieces I wanted to find. I just wanted to do this short piece first. I'm definitely coming back. This is part one, 1,000 years, part one. Okay, but I want to reiterate something. Also about the marriage, the marriage supper. Who is the marriage to? The marriage. That's Israel and Judah. Remember, God is our husband. How do we know that? You go to the to chapter 31. It's written throughout the Bible. It's written throughout the Bible, but I'm just going to pinpoint one easy access for you to find it. In chapter 31, book of Jeremiah, you will see God is our husband. Israel and Judah are his wife. He, he's married to us. That's why when the Spirit of the Lord is talking about fornication, he's talking about uh, Israel and Judah marrying or, or, or dealing with those no gods, those false gods that aren't gods. We have the true God. Great and terrible. Jealous is his name. He is a jealous God. Jealous is his name. Just like a husband. Just like a husband, if another man tries to or does uh, have relations with his wife, jealousy is the rage of a husband. There is no gift that will turn away his wrath. Okay, now we're going to go to the book of Isaiah chapter 65. This was the first thing that caught my attention when I was trying to just get a revelation on it. But I want to read the whole piece to you real quick. Before I end this part one, because there's a lot to support this. There's a, a, a lot. We're going to start Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old. But the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. Now, you got to understand the depths of what they're saying. They shall build houses and inhabit them. We can build a house. And we assume, okay, you know, you live so long and you die off and somebody else lives in it. No. You build the house, you're going to exist just as long as that house does. You're going to exist. Your days, your years will be just as great as the days and the years that house can stand. That that house will stand on its foundation. Okay? And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. No, this isn't just based on, okay, you, you, you're you not going to plant and another eat. No, you're going to plant it. And as long as that fruit is producing fruit, you're going to be the eater of it as long as you choose to eat it because you're going to live long enough. Okay? They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Thousand year reign. Thousand year reign, brothers and sisters. For those of us who make it through the tribulation, for those of us who cross over, we're looking at a thousand year reign before judgment so that all the prophecies and the covenants can be fulfilled so that the pro and the marriage of the land, the marriage, the marriage has to take place. When we go home, we're going home to a wedding ceremony. We're going home to a marriage. We are marrying our God, the one true God who is God. There is a marriage ceremony coming, brothers and sisters. We're not only going back to our land. It really, at this point, it's hard to imagine what it will look like, what it will be like. We're going to have to build up the ruined places. We know that. But Yeshua HaMashiach is going to be there. We're going to have that perfect rule, that perfect law. You be blessed, brothers and sisters. I wanted to share this piece with you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring part two because there's a lot of other pieces to support it with. It's late, and I'm just a little tired. But the part that he was giving me, I was writing other pieces down. I wanted to give you a thousand years as the days of a tree shall be the 
days of my people. And there's a marriage coming, brothers and sisters. This awakening, as we awaken, there's a marriage coming. God is our husband. He's coming back for his bride, for his wife, Israel, Judah. We belong to the Most High, and he's coming back for us. He's coming back for us. Those of us that make it through that tribulation, okay? And yes, those who are going to be resurrected, those are those wise ancients, the leaders of the people, the leaders of the people, okay? The four and twenty elders. We know those are the heads of the tribes of uh, Israel. We also know that they are the apostles, but you also have the prophets, the judges of old, many of the saints of old, many of them who have fire in them for the word of God, fire for the spirit of the most high God, fire for the truth, fire for the Holy Spirit. All praise, honor, glory, and blessings unto the most high God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I ask, Father, that you touch us, that you keep us, that you open our eyes, that you raise us up together, that we have one mind, one heart, one spirit, giving all praise, honor, and glory unto the one true God who is God. And thy name is Jealous, thou art a jealous God. We will have no other God before thee, for thou art God. And we want to thank you this day. And thank you, God, for my family. Praise, honor, and glory unto the Most High God in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and honor and glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, be at peace. This is part one. Shalom.